next we have who was an electrical engineer at the Ceylon Electricity Board. And he was the director of the Urban Development Authority, Sri Lanka Land Reclamation and Development Corporation, Lanka Electricity Company, Civil Aviation Authority, and Water's Edge as well. Currently, the additional secretary to the Ministry of Defense and Urban Development, the project director, Metro Colombo Urban Development Project. Ladies and gentlemen, to talk to you all on the journey towards creating highly livable Metro Colombo, please welcome engineer Rohan Senevratna. Very good evening to all of you. Your Excellencies, Your Worship Mayor of Colombo, Chief Executive Officers and the Managers from the business and investor community, government officials, chairman, urban development authority, and the officials, special invitees, presenters of today's evening forum, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure and privilege to be here today in this evening forum organized by the Urban Development Authority the theme, UDA Inspire Urban Development Investor Forum. I wish to extend my sincere thanks to Chairman UDA, Mr. Nimal Pereira, for inviting me to address the very important business and investor gathering today. I believe the objective of this evening forum is to enlighten the business and the investor community on the ongoing and the future urban regeneration projects which are taking place in the Metro Colombo region and to inspire the investors and the business community and to invite them to be a stakeholder and a party to this urban regeneration programs currently happening. The topic that I have selected uh, to address you today is the journey towards creating a highly livable Metro Colombo. As we all are aware, the Western province generates about 50% of the GDP of this country. And the Metro Colombo and the Colombo city are extremely important for the development of this country. Therefore, creating a highly livable Metro Colombo is very important for the government of Sri Lanka. And therefore, I believe this topic, the journey towards creating a highly livable Metro Colombo, would be interesting for all of you. When Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, the former Prime Minister of Singapore, launched the Garden City program in 1967, he said, I quote, a plan which will make Singapore into a garden city, beautiful with flowers and trees, and as a tidy and little as, as can be. We can make this a garden city within a matter of years. In fact, Singapore became a garden city within a matter of years, and they have not stopped there. Now they are proud to announce the Singapore as city in the garden. And when Mr. Lee Kuan Yew launched the Singapore River Restoration Project, in fact, the Singapore River was an open sewer by 1977, and everybody wanted to have buildings on the other side of the river, not facing the river, because the river was such a polluted water body in Singapore. When he launched this program, he said, I quote, it should be a way of life to keep the water clean, to keep every stream, every culvert free of unnecessary pollution. In 10 years, let us have fishing in the Singapore River. It can be done, unquote. Mr. Lee Kuan Yew said, said this in 1977. So by 1987, the Singaporeans managed to create a very beautiful and clean Singapore River in Singapore. So now everybody wanted to have the waterfront. 
Earlier, they want to have the backyard for the waterfront. And the Marina Bay Sands and all the other important business ventures like Clark Key are facing this beautiful water body now. So ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew inspired urban development in Singapore. And now Singapore comes number one in high density, high livability index, followed by London and Hong Kong. The mayor Bloomberg, the mayor of New York for three times, three sessions, when he addressed the World City Summit some times ago, he said, in a world-class city, I have always thought one of the most important things is that the city has to be family-friendly. Companies have to be able to attract people from around the world. If you cannot bring your family, you are not going to go and work there. So family-friendly means low crime. It means greater cultural institutions. The New York City sometimes ago had a very bad record on the crime. And the infrastructure was becoming older, and the, and the bridges were broken, roads were not up to standards. And when Mayor Bloomberg took over the control of the New York City, he did change it. He initiated many urban regeneration programs to revamp the New York City. The few of them are High Line, the very famous High Line. It's a nice urban scape created in the New York City, abundant overhead elevated road was converted to an urban park. And the Times Square is now more pedestrian friendly. And Mayor Bloomberg inspired urban development in New York City. When Secretary Rajapaksa addressed <coughs> or the, <coughs> gave the oration for the Sujata Jayawardena Memorial Lecture on 2nd December 2010, at the Sri Lanka Foundation Institute, just after he took over the control of the Urban Development Authority and the Urban Development Function in Sri Lanka, he delivered this memorial lecture under the topic Development Plans for City of Colombo. He said, Colombo needs to enhance its image as a preferred destination for international business and tourism, as well as a very comfortable city for all of its residents. There is a need to create more public outdoor recreation spaces with mini parks and community parks for residential areas and larger public parks within the city. There should also be more greenery on the sides of the streets. Through these developments, we will be able to create a clean, green, attractive city that will be the center of Sri Lanka. Then he went on to discuss about the long-term planning and solutions interagency coordination, implementation of zoning, transport, developing a cleaner city, development of waterways and flood control, about the port city, better housing for underserved settlers, and so on. And relocation of payment hookers, of course, the restoration of historical buildings, relocation of government buildings, relocation or redevelopment of rundown legally owned structures in Colombo. So in his oration, he addressed all these very important points in respect of development of Colombo City. In concluding remarks, he said, all of us desire a better Colombo, a city that is clean, green, attractive, and dynamic. Let us work together and work hard to achieve this. Together, we can transform Colombo into a world-class city, globally recognized as a thriving, dynamic, and attractive regional hub that is the centerpiece of 21st century Sri Lanka, the miracle of Asia. Let us make this vision a reality. In fact, Secretary Rajapaksa inspired urban development in Sri Lanka, especially the urban development in the Metro Colombo region. So if we look at his speech or the oration, it has become the policy document of creating a livable Metro Colombo region. I used to read this oration very often and to, and to understand it. He did this oration in 2010, of course. Now we are in 2014. What he said in this oration, 
some of the things, most of the things have been already fulfilled, and some are ongoing. So in his oration, if you summarize it, what he said is, was how to create a highly livable city, highly livable Metro Colombo. For a high livability of a city, the safety is the paramount importance. So in the year 2009, under the leadership of His Excellency President Mahindra Rajapaksa and the guidance of Secretary Rajapaksa, this country, Sri Lanka, achieved peace or earned peace. And that is very significant to create livable Colombo, livable Metro Colombo. So that is the beginning. Without safety, we cannot talk about the livability. So previously, Colombo was not a safe destination, not a safe city. After 2009, Colombo became a very safe city. So that is one of the fundamentals to create a highly livable city. There are many other characteristics that we have to look into in a highly livable city. Cleanliness, mobility, spaciousness, connectivity, sustainable environment, family friendliness, vibrant city economy are some of these. So if you summarize all these things together, in a highly livable city, there are three main characteristics. One is high quality of life, a competitive economy, and a sustainable environment. So the, we, under the direction of the secretary, we changed the focus of the Urban Development Authority. And the focus of the Urban Development Authority now is creating vibrant and livable cities of distinction by planning and facilitating Sri Lanka's physical development in partnership with other agencies and the community. So UDA changed its journey. UDA was a development control organization before Secretary Rajapaksa took over the organization. So we managed to change it. Now UDA is more a development promotion agency than a development control agency. I think that is very, very important for, to make our journey a reality. So the journey began. Journey began with the clean city concept introduced by the Secretary Rajapaksa. If you can remember, in 2009, some time ago, four years ago, the Colombo city was like this. And the garbage was everywhere. And under the direction of Secretary, the environmental police was created. And he personally supervised this collection process of solid waste. And personally supervised the contractors did not spend a single cent more. It was the same set of contractors, but properly managed and controlled by the secretary himself and the environmental police. The result is a very clean city, not only the Colombo city, as well as the suburbs. The second was the obstacle-free road payments. So sometimes ago, all the payments in the city were occupied by the vendors and the people were walking on the carriageways, and there were a lot of accidents, and all the payments were full of vendors. So we started creating new places for the payment hawkers, and payment hawkers were settled there, and now almost all the payments in the city of Colombo and the outskirts are clean, and the people can walk freely and safely. And another important parameter that we looked into is the walkability improvement, especially in the walkability improvement on the roads that is very vital to have a people-friendly city. So we started doing road payments, building road payments, improving the walkability of these road payments. And now most of the road payments in the city of Colombo are upgraded to very high standards and the people and the city dwellers enjoy this uh, road payment with greenery introduced. We wanted to improve the road network in the city. That is also paramount importance to have a highly livable city. The gold road from Kollupitiya to Bambalapitiya section was improved to international standard first, and then followed by many, many roads, Foxhall Street, and all these roads are in very nice shape and no overhead utility lines. Utility lines were made underground. We kept provision for the future, for the water, electricity, and so on. It's a highly integrated project interagency coordination. 
We asked water board what will be your future projects for the next five years. We laid all the water pipes now. And the electricity board converted overhead lines to underground lines and so on. So within a short, very short period of time, we managed to improve the road network in Colombo. Now, most of the roads in Colombo are in good shape. And the Gold Road and the Duplication Road you may be witnessing. The developments are taking place. And that's a massive project which we started uh, from my project, the Metro Colombo Urban Development Project. By September, October, we are trying to finish both the roads. And then those roads will be on par with any international roads. Parallelly, in the Hivala Mount Lavinia Municipal Council and the Sri Jayawardenapura Kote Municipal Council, we have improved 50 roads. We have vested the, the Hivala Mount Lavinia roads recently, and the Sri Jayawardenapura Kote roads we will be vesting with the public on 30th of this month. The other very, very important project that we launched under the leadership of Secretary Rajapaksa is the better housing for people living in underserved settlements. I think Chairman UDA also in his speech mentioned about this project. This is the largest project happening in the country. It's one of the most challenging projects initiated by the Urban Development Project Authority because there is a political dimension for this project. It is not easy to resettle people. There is a political dimension. And earlier governments all failed. They tried, they failed. But with the leadership of Secretary Defense and Urban Development, we managed to progress this work, giving better housing for underserved settlements. There are 68,500 houses, or the families living in Colombo who are occupying underserved houses. And we are trying to give them better housing. And by doing that, we are trying to liberate land because this is a win-win situation. We give better housing. We liberate very important economic value lands. And those lands will be given to private sector for the economic development. So we are going to liberate about 900 acres of land in Colombo City, which are illegally occupied by these payment hawkers. And we are going to use about 300 of these acres for rehousing. And we are going to reserve about 150 acres for green spaces and the open spaces. And then the balance 450 acres we are planning to give to the private sector for economic development. So this project has already been launched and progressing well. And the first condominium was opened by His Excellency the President in 18th November 2013 with 500 houses. And now 5,000 houses are being Rather, 5,000 houses will be completed by end of this year, and 15,000 houses are being constructed now. This is one of such condominium. And the construction is in progress in many of these housing schemes. Some have come to the conclusion and the completion. Some are in the foundation levels and so on. So work is progressing. And this is the list of housing complexes that will be completed this year. And we are going to give 5,009 houses for these underserved settlers during this year, before the end of 2014. By doing that, we will be liberating about 30 acres of land. Not only 30, it will be more, but leaving out for the rehousing, we will have 30 acres of land for the economic development and, and to the private sector. I think this is a very interesting point for the investor community and the business community. There is a very good land in Demetagoda. I'm not sure whether business community is aware of it. It's a five-acre land facing the baseline road. It's a fantastic land for any business opportunity. So likewise, there are so many lands already cleared. And by the end of this year, all these land plots will be cleared. I think these informations have been distributed among you through a CD, I believe. And these are some of the lands liberated, the Demetagoda land of five acres. It's a very good land for the business community. And then the Baker Rivatta land, already liberated in Nara in, uh, yeah, in Nara Hempita. And then the Castle Street land, so that is already liberated two acres facing the highway, facing the Sri Jayawadarapura road. And we will be liberating another two acres there. So there will be four acres of land for the investments. And the Myra place. Uh, one acre land will be released very soon. So likewise, by the end of this year, 
there will be about 30 acres of prime lands will be released and will be offered for the private sector and the business community and the investor community for, to plan their business ventures. Another very important project that we started is the creation of urban spaces. The Colombo city did not have adequate urban spaces for the city dwellers. So we wanted to create more urban spaces for the city dwellers. Started with Westbury and the Independence Square, very popular destinations now for the city dwellers. And the Dieta Uyana, it's a byproduct of the flood control. To control the floods, we created this lake. And this is the, the, the urban space, it's a byproduct of the lake. And now uh, thousands of people are gathering there, and a lot of business opportunities are already established there. And then the seaplane landing bay, and the seaplanes are already landing. This is again another flood control project. But we took the volumes of water by creating a seaplane landing area. And an international regatta also, uh, regatta also can take place there. So Japan, Sri Lanka, Friendship Road, and thousands of people are walking along these urban spaces. And the Wetland Park, Nugegoda, very popular destination now, even from early in the morning to late night. And people enjoy this wetland and the walking paths and the surroundings with nice music. If you go on Saturday and Sunday, the Navy Band plays there. It's a very beautiful song, so you can listen there. And thousands of people are attracting there. The Kimbula Alla, it's a nice open space. And a lot of children are enjoying these open spaces, cycling and so on. And we developed the town hall square and the Vihara Mahadevi Park. It was closed earlier with a fence. We made it open. And now the town hall square and the park is a beautiful park now. And so many people, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, at least about 20, 25,000 people gather in the park. And early in the morning, people start walking in the park. And it's a beautiful landscape in the city for the normal people. We did construct public convenience facilities, five-star public convenience facilities. We have already commissioned seven. Next month, we are commissioning another four, and we are planning to go for another four. So there will be 15 very good public convenience facilities for the public. And while all these projects are going on, Secretary is very, very interested on restoration of heritage buildings and giving these buildings for business community, for the business opportunities. He started with restoration of the Dutch hospital, the famous meeting place in Colombo now, and the second stage of Dutch hospital, and the race course, the, the mini stand and the grand stand, and given to business opportunities. And this will be the most famous place in time to come. On 13th of this month, this complex, former Alter General complex, will become the arcade independent square. It's a fantastic creation. And Secretary himself spent so much of time in looking into each and every detail of this complex. And once open next Friday, it will house about 43 business ventures with mini cinemas and food courts and so on. Nicely landscaped and a restored mental hospital. This building complex was a mental hospital some time ago. And after 13th, you can enjoy this arcade. It's a beautiful arcade with water, water fountains and so many other facilities uh, for the city dwellers and the foreigners and the tourists who are coming to Colombo. The Gafur building is an abandoned building and a very old building that is being restored and being converted to a city hotel. And the work is progressing now under the Urban Development Authority. And the Colombo port area is being developed, giving due concern to the historical character of that area. So we, don't, we want to preserve the historical character. This is uh, Cologne in Germany. And we want to create this kind of ambience there with cobblestone streets and this old, old, uh, old historical culture and to invite uh, people to enjoy the life in the old part of Colombo. That is very important for the city. And the floating market will be ready by end of this month. And this will give a lot of business opportunities for the, for the vendors. About 90 vendors will be housed in this uh, floating market. And most of the work is finished. And we are trying to construct two pedestrian 
state of art overhead bridges linking Bambale PTS station and the Kullu PTS station towards Gold Road with escalators, outdoor escalator facilities, and all the modern escalator facilities and all the modern other infrastructure facilities. So once completed, this will be a city icon. And the waterfront park in Crow Island, we are about to commence for the Colombo North people, Colombo North city dwellers, we are going to create a beach park, Crow Island beach park with all the modern facilities. And the expert city, which is being constructed in the Tripoli market. Tripoli market was abundant for many decades, perhaps two to three decades. And there were old shelters with covered by the trees and nobody was doing any useful development there. And then we decided that we will create some research and development center complex in the city. That is very important for a city. This is Biopolis in Singapore. Singapore has created this very important R&D complex in Singapore. Because R&D should be housed within the city. That is very important to flourish the research and development. So we started this project in the abandoned Tripoli market. And this was the, in the beginning the architectural drawing for the complex. And now the stage one is nearing completion. And most probably in one to one and a half months time, the first stage will be completed and we will be housing the real R&D people there. We do not allow everybody to come and house there. It's only for the people who do real R and research and development and bring the necessary expertise to Sri Lanka. So that complex is getting ready now and about to be opened about one and a half months' time. And new bus halls have come everywhere. And the Bere Lake, Rest Bere Lake restoration project we started because Bere Lake is one of the most important water bodies for the city. East Bere embankment protection work have been started. We are going to create a linear park all around the Bere Lake. And now the embankment protection work is going on. And most probably we will be able to finish these things soon. And then we will be starting the linear park surrounding the Bere Lake. And we are developing a business model for East Bere development because East Bere has about 50 to 60 acres of land. Most of these lands belong to government organizations. So we want to pool these lands and to create a huge business complex there. So we have had a lot of studies on this. And now we are about to launch that project as well. The Lotus Tower also coming there. And next to Lotus Tower, the Lotus Mall will be coming. And then next to that, we are trying to create another shopping street with, with facilities for shopping and for the restaurants like Clark Key in Singapore. It's facing the water body of Bere Lake. So that project is going on. There will be a lot of business opportunities for the business community and the investor community on this East Bere development, 50, 60 acres of very valuable land along this road strip. And we are trying to pool the land, and we are trying to get some land from the railway side as well, and to do a really in good integrated urban development project along DR Vijayawadana Mahavata. The mega scale urban regeneration projects also parallelly we started. So this is the largest building complex that is being done in South Asia, I believe. This is the defense headquarters complex in Nakuragoda. The idea behind putting up this complex is to bring all the defense establishments in the city of Colombo to one house so that we can liberate these very valuable lands occupied by the military in the city of Colombo. So we liberated the land in Goldface that was occupied by the military and given it for the economic development. Shangri-La and ITC complexes are coming there. And this complex is $400 million complex. And all the work of this complex are being handled by the Sri Lankan architects, Sri Lankan engineers. And the Triforces are doing the construction work. About 55% of the construction work is now completed. And, ne and during next one to one and a half years time, we are trying our best to complete this entire complex of $400 million, which will occupy about 10,000 uh, triforces and the Ministry of Defense officials. So work is progressing very well. The Colombo commercial land, we managed to clear the legal battles and gave it for economic development. And the, and the piling work of these very famous developments are taking place now. 
and the Shangri-La and the ITC hotel complexes are coming in gold phase, and the work is going on on both complexes and the waterfront integrated resort of John Keel's Holdings. Very important project for the Colombo and for the country. Work already started, and the work is focusing. And the Slave Island projects, we tried a different business model. It's not the normal business model that we tried. In Slave Island, we noted that about five acres land is there with about 500 acre owners of one perch, one and a half perch, and so on. So we wanted to pool the entire land and give them rehousing in the same place and to liberate the balanced land and, and give it for private sector for the development. So we negotiated with business people, the Urban Development Authority, and we facilitated this process because it's a very complex process that has to facilitate because there are about 500 donors. But the Urban Development Authority was very successful in trying this business model and managed to liberate five-acre land in Slave Island, one land, and there is another land next to the, the land that is the Tata complex. And the Imperial Builders and the Tata complex, both works have already been started. And this is a very interesting business model that we, tr we have tried. I think we invite the business community to come and discuss with the Urban Development Authority to apply this business model for some other places where we have so many slums and shanties, or even private ownership lands. There are so many places in Kalamu City, but so many owners of two, uh, two perch, 10 perch, something like that. So this mod business model is the solution. So they, the developer, we don't spend a single uh, cent on this development. The developer he himself will put up the re relocation building and move the people from the existing place to the relocation building, and then we liberate the land, and land will be utilized for the business development by the developer. So I invite the business community to discuss this model with the Urban Development Authority. The Port City work started and ongoing. might take a few years for the completion of the city, and then it might take another few years for the business to thrive in this place. While these projects are going, we notice that the flooding in Colombo is a critical problem for Colombo City, and we wanted to avoid flooding in Colombo. In 2010, even the parliament went underwater, and many places in Colombo went underwater. So we immediately started many projects, the creation of upper lakes, upper catchment lakes, cleaning of main canal system, rehabilitation of main canal system, proper cleaning of micro drainage network, widening of outfalls, and improvements to culverts, and additional micro tunnels. We are going to do two micro tunnels from Metro Colombo Urban Development Project to ease out the flooding in Metro Colombo region, and two pumping stations to pump in an emergency. And we are doing about 15 micro drainage uh, projects as well to address the localized flooding in the Metro Colombo region and to have a control center to manage the entire operation from one location. So this is a very successful project. Some work have already been completed. Some work will go for another two to three years for the completion. And the dredging machinery was procured under my project Metro Colombo Urban Development Project with the support of the World Bank and given to agencies for the maintenance works and so on. We procured trucks and various other equipments for the agencies. The Veras Ganga project, another flood control project, was started. That is to avert floods in Nuge Goda, Ratana Pitiya, and that area. And the work is now progressing, another $100 million project. And the work is now going, and perhaps in two years' time, we should be able to convert, uh, uh, able to complete the project. The wetland management, because when we are doing all these things, we wanted to give due concern to the protection of wetlands, because wetlands are very, very important for a city to, come to, to have the high water quality and to create the city temperatures and to flood control and so on. So we identified the importance of wetland. In fact, Colombo is blessed with the world's best wetlands. Some of you may not have seen these wetlands. The Cote Marsh and many other marshes in the city are uh, fantastic wetlands and beautiful wetlands. So we started a program to protect these wetlands and to avoid landfilling. We are very strict on landfilling. We have police force to mitigate the landfilling. And we hired this gentleman, Dr. Matthew Robert Simpson, the expert in 
in wetland management as our consultant through the support of the World Bank. He has been working with us for the last one to one and a half years, and he is advising us on the wetland management in the Metro Colombo because the sustainable environment is very, very important to create a livable city, highly livable city. We started working in the Badagana Biodiversity Park. That is to give a little opening to the park so that the people, children can come to the park and understand about the importance of the biodiversity, importance of the wetlands, and so on. So this we are doing under my project, and it's a very interesting project, and perhaps by the end of this year, we should be able to complete all these designs are done by Dr. Matthew Simpson. And the study centers, visitor centers will be created. And in Talavatugoda, we have started another, by another wetland park, and the work is now going on. We have launched Colombo Green Growth Program with the support of the World Bank, that is to improve the greenery in the Metro Colombo region. This is another very, very important project that we have started. Even though Colombo is a cleaner place, the final disposing is a huge problem. The garbage is dumped, solid waste management is dumped in a place called Mithatamulla. A thousand tons per day, completely unsanitary, and the leachate is going to river, uh, canal network and, and sometimes to Kelna River as well. It's an environmental hazard. And, and many of these uh, of, uh, professionals who have been involved in this solid waste management could not find any solution for the last 10 years. The Karadiana and the Mithatamulla are environmental hazards. Houses are getting breaking down, and it's a huge hazard, and I don't know whether we can go even another one year, because it is a huge open dump in Mithatamulla and the Karadiana, two dumps. So we started the project, and we did the feasibility study to move solid waste by train from Colombo to abandoned limestone quarries in Aruakkalu, 30 kilometers away from Putlam. No people are living there, no land value. Those are abundant quarries, limestone quarries. And now we have finalized the project. I got all the, the Korean consultants. We have completed the designs, tender documentation finalized. And last Friday, I did the presentation to Dr. Jayasundar about the project. He immediately agreed to finance this project. So this will be one of the most important projects for the Metro Colombo region to manage the solid waste in the Metro Colombo region. So we will transport solid waste from, with a transfer station from Mithatamulla to Aruakkalu by train. This is a very common phenomenon in New York and various other places. The solid waste is being transported by train. So this will be, if we implement, we are, have a very ambitious program for the implementation of this project. We are trying to complete the project in two years. And if we do Metro Colombo, area will be free of solid waste problem. And this will be one of the best projects to come in the near future. The expressways are going round the city, the outer circular, then the airport highway, then the southern highway, and the outer circular first section is done, and then now the second section is going from Kaduvela to Kadavata, and third section will be coming from Kerala Pitya to Kadavata. Once we have those two sections, it's the outer circular will be completed. The government, the Road Development Authority, is not going to stop there. They have initiated preliminary work and the feasibility to have another elevated highway, expressway, along Baseline Road, from Kalani River up to, the, up to Kirulapana. And another expressway from near from Kalani, Kalani Bridge to the port city. Once we have these two expressways, the, 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 the incoming traffic will be very smooth, and the people can start the journey from airport and come to wherever they want within a very short period of time. And this is the architectural view of this expressway. It's a modern design to have middle open space so that the light will come in between the two lanes. And it's a modern design. And the Road Development Authority is designing another one to have from, from Nara Hempita to the outer circular road. The trace is being finalized now. It will come through these areas. And the trace is being finalized. It will connect with Pore in the outer circular. So if you have completed that project also, then the, from the outer circular, you can come to the city. And the mobility, that is also one of the paramount importance to create a highly livable city, mobility will be, mobility problem will be addressed. And the Metro Colombo Urban Transport Project, the feasibility study 
is ongoing and, and handled by the transport ministry to have the light rail system from Malambe up to Kalania and the stage one from Malambe to Kotahena via very important places in the city like Setsiripaya, then Boral Lakota Road and the National Hospital. There will be link from Kolupiti as well, then it will go to port where will be the transport hub and from there it will go to Maradana, Kotahena and the stage two it will be the Kalania. So the feasibility studies are being done and the land acquisition process started and I hope this project will start very soon. This is a very, very important for, the, for this country, for the city to improve the mobility in the city. And the Metro Colombo water supply improvement project already started with the support of the ADB for US dollar 180 million so that the adequate water will be available for the city of Colombo. So I think this is a very important message for the investors that there will be adequate water to the city that is very important to think about your future business ventures. And the Metro Colombo electricity distribution development project started by the Ceylon Electricity Board facilitated by me from the Ministry of Defense and Urban Development, US dollar 250 million project already started and the, now the designs are going on. We have finalized the substations, cable routes, and so on. And by the end of this year, the physical work will be started. Once we complete this project, there will be adequate power to the city. There will be adequate power to the country with the commissioning of Norachole third stage. And we will be having 900 megawatts in Norachole. Once we commission 900 megawatts, we will have adequate power, adequate low cost power to the country. And with this project, we will have adequate power to the city of Colombo and the Metro Colombo region. So the investors need not to have worry about whether future there will be shortage of power. No, there won't be a shortage of power. We will provide adequate power to the city. Metro Colombo sewer improvement project is ongoing and to expand the sewer system of $100 million. So that is also going on. And with all these projects going on, ongoing and the future projects, what we are trying to do is to create a highly livable Metro Colombo. So we started about four years ago, and during these four years ago, we have achieved great results, but long way to go. It needs a lot of time. Rome was not built in a day. It needs a long time. But what we are trying to do is to create a highly livable city and to have high quality of life, competitive economy, and a sustainable environment. What from government, what from the Urban Development Authority and the Ministry of Defense and Urban Development, what we are trying to do is to give, them, give you all all the available infrastructure and the facilities, policies, frameworks. It is up to the business community and the investor community to come and take these opportunities and to be innovative and to find good business ventures for this city. This city is a very interesting city. However, I do not see that much in the competitive economy. Competitive economy is very important for a city. City won't thrive without a competitive economy. Therefore, unless we build the city economy, these cities won't be thrived and we will not be able to maintain these cities the way we wanted. Therefore, it is up to the business community, up to the investor community to join hands with us. We are providing all the infrastructure and the other facilities you have to come and do this competitive economy part because the government cannot do this competitive economy part. It is up to you all to do that. You should build the city economy. We will facilitate. You should bring more tourists to the city. Now we have reached 1.6 million, I believe. So by the end of this year, we may be reaching 2 million. If we can get each tourist to stay one night in Colombo and go to the airport, I think that is good enough. Then this city will thrive. And that is what we should try to do. So tourists won't come to a city without attractions. Attractions will come from shopping. Shopping is one of the fundamental attractions for the tourists to come. So we have to have a lot of shopping, shopping streets, and more attractions, and the nightlife, the art, the culture. And this city should become a vibrant city. But I don't see the vibrancy yet. But vibrancy is very important for the city of Colombo and the Metro Colombo region. So there is a huge responsibility lies with the business and the investor community to come forward and to take these opportunities, take these challenges, and to create a very interesting, very good competitive economy for the Metro Colombo region. 
So my request for the business community and the private sector, imagine, innovate, and implement. Imagine your business ideas. Don't wait till something is given on a plate, something we construct in the independence arcade, and we do everything, and we say that there is a shopping space. Please come and invest. That is good. We want that. But you have to go one step further. You should be creative enough. You should imagine the potential of this city. And we are making confidence by showing all these programs that we have started and creating this enthusiasm and inspiring all of you that we will provide all the necessary support and the facilities and the infrastructure for you all. Don't worry about that. But it is up to you all to come, imagine, innovate, and implement your innovative projects so that the city will have a fantastic economy. With that economy, this city can thrive, and we can create a very, very highly livable Metro Columbia region. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.